This is Pat's Two Cents, reminding you that God's into love. Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. This is our Saturday service, God's Church of Love. We're reading from Isaiah chapter 7, Psalms 83, and Deuteronomy 33. And I'm just going to go as I feel led. <clears throat> okay. Starting with Isaiah chapter 7. What God is showing me is a course of action. And sometimes a course of action goes in two directions. And I want you to hear the two directions things can go in. Satan can come against us. Life can come against us. But God is for us. And we have to decide what our course of action is. Isaiah 7. Um, and I'm going to try to read real fast because I know some of y'all get bored with the word. But listen anyway, please. And it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, that Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of, of Remaliah, king of Israel, went up toward Jerusalem to war against it. You hear that? To war against it, but could not prevail against it. And it was told the house of David saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim. And his heart was moved and the heart of his people as the trees of the wood are moved with the wind. In other words, they were knocking at the knees with fear. <clears throat> then said the Lord unto Isaiah, go forth now to meet Ahaz, thou and Shizarub, thy son at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fullest field. And say unto him, take heed and be quiet. Fear not, neither be faint-hearted for the two tails that he's smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger of resin with Syria and, uh, and the son of Remaliah, because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Remaliah have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, Let us go up against Judah and vex it, and let us make a breach therein for us, and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tabal. Thus saith the Lord God, and here's your word. It shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. Now, God's word stands. And if he says that the devil's devices are not going to stand, you have no need to fear. There are times when Satan comes in. He tries to bring division. He tries to bring confusion. He's doing everything in his power to wreak havoc in our lives because he knows that the distraction of distress can actually depress. And once we are depressed, there is no energy to do the things that God has us on this planet to do. That's why the joy of the Lord is our strength. So what does Satan do? He tries to pull the joy out from under us and fill us with depression, anxiety, fear, worry, all of that. Now, I'm just showing you the course of action, because that's the word that came to me last night. Psalms 83, I want you to see, I'm showing you how the enemy works against us. Before we go any further, I want you to see how the enemy works against us. Then I want you to hear the promise of God. <clears throat> All right. Psalms 83. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace. And be not still, O God, for lo, thine enemies make a tumult. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation. Check that out. Come, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. What they're dealing with, I want to go back up there to, to say what their whole device is. Verse four, they have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. The strategy of the enemy is to 
null and void your effectiveness and my effectiveness. The strategy of the enemy is to encumber us, as Rashad was saying earlier, that spirit of heaviness. You got so much weight on you, you can't move. You remember years ago when I was a lot heavier, there was a lot of things I could not do because I was carrying too much water weight all through my body. Even my heart was acting a butt because I was carrying way too much fluid. When you're encumbered with weights, when you're encumbered with worries and anxiety and distractions and frustrations and all kind of mess going on, going off in your life, it's very difficult, as we discussed earlier, to even hear the voice of God. It's very difficult. See, God's not going to compete with our noise. Now, we have the power to turn that volume down. Just like I turned the volume down so this recording would be free of background noises. We have the power to turn the volume down to life, the vicissitudes, the fears, the anxieties, the clutter, the clamor, all the depression, the heaviness, all of it. We have the power to turn that volume down. If we choose to let that volume stay up loud, there'll be a lot of things we won't hear from God. Warnings. Mm -hmm. Admonishments. Correction. Words of healing. Words of encouragement. Being led to read a particular scripture because God wants to say something in particular to you. We don't realize what we miss out on when we get encumbered and all caught up in the winds of adversity and the, in the, the winds of life blowing in every direction. It's not always about fighting temptation. It's not always about fighting sin. It's about being encumbered. Now, what I want to ask you, Sit down one day and do an assessment of what you do with your daily life. Oh, I have to do it too, because I'm, I'm failing in this myself. So I'm not just preaching to you, I'm preaching to me too. We all have to do a reassessment from time to time. How many hours do we spend doing what we like to do? <clears throat> how many minutes? How many hours? How many days? Mm-hmm. How many minutes, hours, or days do we spend doing what God wants us to do? And I'm not talking busy work. I'm not talking about doing ministry. I'm talking about spending time with him, getting him to refuel us, renewal, uh, renew us, huh? regenerate us, rejuvenate us. How much time? All right. Now. Deuteronomy, this is what I want you to hear. This is a real quick word. Deuteronomy is what God says he's going to do in us. Now, he's, this is being read to all the different tribes of Israel. But we have to remember we are the New Testament Israel. So we must apply all of his promises to us. And when Satan rises up against you, this is a good chapter for you to, to really get into and read over and over and over so that you can remember what God's heart is towards his people. Listen to this. And this is the blessing wherein Moses, the man of God, blessed the children of Israel because, before his death. <clears throat> and he said, the Lord came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with 10,000 of saints from his right hand with a fiery law for them. Yea, he loved the people. All his saints are in thy hand, and they sat down at thy feet. Every one shall receive of thy words. Moses commanded us a law, even the inheritance of the congregation of Jacob. And he was king in Jerusalem when he, <laughs> I'm not even going to try to mention the words. But anyway, let's go down to verse 
uh, 7. And this is the blessing of Judah. And he said, hear, Lord, the voice of Judah and bring him unto his people. Let his hands be sufficient unto him. Apply all of these blessings to you. Let his hands be sufficient unto him and be thou in help to him from his enemies. So when the enemy comes out against you, this is Pat's two cents. When the enemy comes out against you from the right, from the left, from above and below, you can quote this. No, uh-uh. My hands are sufficient. My hands are sufficient for me. And God will give me help from my enemies. I'm not in this alone. That's why it pays to know the promises of God. And of Benjamin, he said, the beloved of the Lord shall dwell in safety by him. See, all of these apply to us. And the Lord shall cover him all the day long, and he shall dwell between his shoulders. And of Joseph, he said, blessed of the Lord is his land for the precious things of heaven, for the dew and for the deep and, the, and that coucheth beneath and for the precious fruits brought forth by the sun and for the precious things put forth by the moon and for the chief things of the ancient mountains for the precious things of the lasting hills. And he's just going on and on and I'm not gonna read all of it, it's a very long chapter. Read the blessings in Deuteronomy 33. When you read what God is blessing his people with, you can apply every single one because in Jesus is all encompassing when it comes to God's blessings, when, God, when it comes to God's divine protection. It's all in Jesus Christ. Whatever God allows, it's for lesson's sake, for strengthening sake, to give you higher levels of discernment, to teach you spiritual warfare, to impart to you more and more wisdom and insight, more understanding. You are to learn and grow from these experiences, not be brought low. None of Satan's devices that are allowed to take place on this planet in our lives is meant to destroy us. None of them. None of them. Because what Satan means for bad, another scripture, God means for good. What Satan uses against you, God will use that very same thing for you. When God allowed Satan to put us in a position where we were in foreclosure, God used that whole scenario to bless us with this beautiful home. No matter what God uses, when God allowed me to be placed in ICU, God used that whole experience as a learning tool for me to learn my new levels of, uh, of limitations and what I had to do to keep my body. I had to learn a new me in order to keep myself healthy and cooperate with God's laws for my body. No matter what God allows, there is something to gain from it. I don't care how much it looks like you're losing. There's something to gain. When my husband passed away, my husband's my heart. I love that man to this day. I am still in love with him. And it's been six years since he passed. But guess what? There was an importation of wisdom an importation of insight. I learned so much from him. A lot of you benefit from what I learned from my husband through my messages. So there's an importation that takes place when a person passes on. They always leave something that you can use for the rest of your life, for good, for God's sake, always. Now, whatever is going against you in your life, whatever you're struggling with, whatever you feel is your shortfall, whatever you're worried about, remember, 
God's got a course of action for you. He's got a course of action. He will turn that thing around 180 degrees. And what you see as a curse now will end up being a tremendous blessing later. Why? You're in God's hands. You're under his care. He's for you, not against you, because you're for him, not against him. He knows who his people are. God bless you. You be encouraged. It's, just, it's a short one, but I just want you to know, for those of you who worry about where you stand with God and where God stands with you, God has a course of action for everything the devil throws at you. God's got a course of action. He not only has a line of defense, he has a line of offense. Trust me, God's got your back. He's got your future too. And he's got you right where he wants you. God bless you. Seek him with all your heart. Remember, the word says when you seek him, when you diligently seek him, you will find him. The key word is diligently seek him. Not passively, not casually, not occasionally. Diligently seek him. And you will find him when you seek him with all your heart. And life is so much sweeter. Even the bitter moments have sweetness to them because of God his course of actions, and his promises. God bless you. Stay encouraged. Mm -hmm.